Clean architecture is likely one of the most heavily misunderstood concepts in software development. People seem to be either super dogmatic about it or incredibly skeptical about it. And as usual, it seems like I have to shine some light on the huge gray area that exists in between where this concept is actually very useful. So let's chat a bit about what clean architecture is and more importantly, what clean architecture isn't. When we're looking at these architectural patterns, we tend to think of them as these on off switches. I do clean architecture or I'm building microservices, etc. We treat them as like kind of an all or nothing deal where every single part of our application needs to follow this entire clean architecture template to gain its benefits. This is a big problem. Architecture patterns are not this, uh, you either do them or you don't. It's more like a menu of certain patterns or certain opinions uh, that have been combined for a very specific reason. You don't have to gobble up the entire restaurant menu just to satisfy your hunger, right? That's crazy. You pick and choose from the menu which ones you want, how much of them do you want, and how much are you going to put on your plate. Maybe part of your application uses some of these patterns and some other parts don't. Maybe you pick a couple of these and you apply them everywhere and never touch the others. The main idea of clean architecture, the main idea of clean architecture is building software that's highly maintainable. Every single opinion that comes under the umbrella of clean architecture is geared towards that goal. But the trade-off of that long-term maintainability is that the overall complexity of the system increases. And along with that, the system overall becomes harder to work with. It becomes less agile. Things are separated into clear boundaries. And if you want to cross the boundaries, you have to really care about the contracts that are involved. But it increases the maintainability of the system because the local complexity goes down. Because things, individual things get simpler and easier to work with. They also get more deterministic, more testable, and more reliable, which means maintainable over the long term. However, most of the time when we're building software, long-term maintainability is not really a top priority, or sometimes it's not even a priority at all. For a greenfield project, for a project that's just beginning, agility is probably going to be a lot more important than is this code maintainable over time? Or maybe you're building something that needs to be really, really performant and maintainability is less of a concern than performance, which means you're going to pick architectural patterns that encourage performance over maintainability. In any of those situations though, your code should definitely not look like any of these clean code templates, unless you're building something that is very, very complex and literally needs to last for many years and you know about that. The clean architecture templates are practically useless. Let's imagine this is kind of what your code base looks like. It's not quite spaghetti code. There's not a lot of things overlapping with each other or causing complex entanglements. You can still see the threads separate from each other. So it's easy to wrap your head around, it's easy to debug, but no one would give it a clean architecture stamp, obviously, because it's kind of, uh, there's no abstractions here. Uh, we don't have anything separated into distinct layers. However, over time, maybe as you start scaling up or maybe as you start adding more features or maybe as things start getting more stable over time, you'll need to keep revisiting the old code that you have written to add enhancements, to fix bugs, or to bring new people onto the code base. And you're probably gonna find that some places in your code base are getting messier and more difficult to work with and are causing a lot of unexpected bugs. We all have hit this point in our projects where it's not that the entire project is crap, but there, is, there are certain places in the project that people don't like to touch because that's where a lot of the messiness or complexity lives. And we don't wanna break it apart, obviously. And over time, if this is left unchecked, your code is just going to keep getting more complicated. If you don't at some point give those parts attention and refactor them and make them cleaner, the complexity is just going to grow and you'll actually end up with what we call spaghetti code. So from here, you have two options. If you're a highly experienced programmer with lots of experience recognizing code smells and refactoring where needed and follow a more first principled approach for code refactoring, that's great. You don't need any prescribed kind of sets of opinions like clean, clean architecture and you can just go on your merry way. But if you're not super experienced in writing good long-term maintainable and well-designed code, clean architecture is kind of a great starting point. It's not a template that you follow religiously, but as a way to build an understanding of what exactly maintainable code means and what it looks like and help you build some concepts and frameworks in your head to help you build better software. So you might take your messy code and you could start slowly applying some of those clean architecture principles in your code and start building some of those layers, but only in the specific places where it's needed. 
you can see here that we have taken two of those kind of complex entangled bits from the previous version and given them some separation of concerns and some proper dependency management so that those complex parts are now slightly easier to understand. However, the rest of the code pretty much looks ex exactly the same. So I did not go and up take a clean architecture template and put it all over my code base. It's only the complex and the tangled parts that need to be cleaned up a bit and clean architecture provides some nice guidelines on how we should approach it. So what are these guidelines? What, are, what am I even talking about? There are two main foundations of clean architecture. The first one is a prescription on what separation of concerns looks like. And the second is the flow of dependencies between them. Clean architecture divides the application into three distinct layers, at least. The infrastructure, the application, and the domain. These are separated kind of by their technical purpose. Uh, the domain layer consists of rules and knowledge that are translated directly from the real world into the programmatic world. These are rules that would exist even if the application that you're trying to build did not exist. That's kind of how clean architecture puts it. And then the application layer is responsible for composing the domain rules into use cases that are specific to the application that we are building. They're also called automation rules. And then the infrastructure layer kind of acts as a plugin that bootstraps the application with infrastructure concerns like web servers, databases, message brokers, uh, configuration management, secret management, whatever other infrastructure you need for that application to run. And all of this is underpinned by the dependency flow. Things can only depend on the layer underneath it or in this diagram to its right. This is done because as you go towards the right in this diagram, the importance or the sacredness of your code increases. It basically means how important is this code to the application and what is it going to be changed by? Is it going to be changed by the business experts or the product managers or the infrastructure people? It ensures that the infrastructure of your software is as flexible as possible. You can use whatever infrastructure you want to uh, without making a lot of changes to the core of your application, which is the application itself and the domain layer underneath. You can also easily test any part of your application because it's decoupled from the rest of it. So you can, you can test your domain layer and your application rules with completely different infrastructure or completely minimal infrastructure so that your, your test runs fast. Now, I don't follow a lot of these rules when I'm building apps, again, because long-term maintainability is not really my top priority. My top priority is usually trying to get some features out of the door to test with some users and see if they are good ideas or not. However, after a bunch of different experimentation, I've kind of selected a subset of these patterns that I sometimes apply in my code bases when things start to get messy. Most of the time, I'm fine coupling some infrastructure dependencies directly in my application or my domain layer because rebuilding those abstractions from scratch is actually really painful and it's really easy to get wrong. It's something that you do after a lot of practice and after your application reaches a certain level of complexity, but it's not something that I've found necessary. But you might also notice that I still have the three separate layers that clean architecture kind of prescribes. I think separating into these three layers is kind of a low hanging fruit of maintainability. Anytime that my code starts to get a little complex, but even then, even separating my code out in these three layers is not something I do very often. Most of the time when I'm building applications, I'm actually following this vertical slice approach that was popularized by Jimmy Bogard. The idea here is to just separate the code in terms of the feature or the business capability that they achieve, not in terms of their technical concern. All the code here is split according to which use case it serves for the end user. And that also means that any infrastructure, application, or domain concerns that are, that are necessary for a single feature are combined into the slice or into the code for that feature. After a certain point of writing code and development, if that code starts to get very messy, or if I see a lot of uh, code being duplicated in those feature slices, then I start thinking about the application and the domain layers. I start to look at which part of that duplicated code looks like application logic so that I can separate that out and share it between those two vertical slices. So once I discover that there's, there's some shared logic in a bunch of my feature slices, I can start to separate that out into which one is application layer and which one is the domain layer. And then I can start to build those separation, but only at those places. I'm, I'm still not applying a clean architecture template onto my entire project. I don't need to turn my entire project into something like this, where each of those concerns are very neatly separated from, from each other. While this looks great, 
this takes a lot of time to build and it certainly takes a lot more time to change. So like I mentioned earlier, this might be a great and very maintainable piece of software, but it's not going to be, but it's not going to be as easy to change and adapt. And that's because clean architecture is not something that you need to just grab and throw over your entire project and follow very religiously. Clean architecture is a set of opinions on how we can separate out code, how we can manage dependencies, and how we can achieve maintainability in the parts of the code where it makes sense. The, the trickiest part about clean architecture is going through your code base and recognizing what are the places where you should be refactoring things and how should you be refactoring things. So the next time you look at clean architecture or something about clean architecture, always think in terms of refactoring your existing code to look a little more like the clean architecture template, not exactly like the clean architecture template. And definitely don't think of starting new projects with those clean architecture templates. That's the absolute worst way to start a new project. I hope I answered some of those concerns around clean architecture and why I think it's still a really valuable and useful piece of concept that should be in all of our tool belts. That said, there is a much important piece of architecture or piece of concept, which is the vertical slice architecture. That's the one that I recommend at any point because vertical slice architecture gives you the agility that you need at the beginning of a project while also making sure that you have room for refactoring and optimizing and making things cleaner. This is another reason why I'm super excited about React Server Components because, because React Server Components make building vertical slice architecture much easier with full stack applications with all of interactivity. Because I can tell you, building full stack web applications in a vertical slice manner has been one of the biggest challenges that I have faced, especially in the last few years. And I cannot be more excited about a technology that, that is completely designed to fix that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go and check out this video that I made on React Server Components. Just remember, clean architecture is used for refactoring.